Good morning. I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our service this morning on Wednesday, September 27th. Today is the feast day for Euphrosyne of Alexandria, a monastic. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this feast day. Merciful God, who looks not with outward eyes, but discerns the heart of each. We confess that those whom we love are the most are often strangers to us. Give to all parents and children, we pray, the grace to see one another as they truly are and as you have called them to be. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. The scripture pointed for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke, the 14th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he's laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The saint we remember today has really a pretty extraordinary story. Saint Euphrosyne, also known as Smaragdus, has a really unusual story amongst the monastics, and that's saying a lot. She was born in the fifth century, the only child of a couple in Alexandria. Her family was wealthy, warm and loving, but tragedy struck when her mother died when she was still a young girl. Her father, Paphnutius instructed her in the Christian faith and often took her with him to visit the monasteries outside of the city. Paphnutius, looking out for her long-term welfare, arranged what he thought was an excellent marriage to a wealthy and handsome young man from a prominent family. Euphrosyne, however, would have none of it. She argued with her father, and she ended up running away from home in anger without even saying goodbye. She cut her hair, changed into men's attire, and adopted the name of Smaragdus. She joined a monastic community outside of Alexandria, where she made great progress in prayer and in wisdom. Years later, Paphnutius came to that same monastery seeking comfort from the abbot over the loss of his daughter, whom he presumed to be dead. The abbot sent Paphnutius to Smaragdus for spiritual direction and guidance. Smaragdus instructed Paphnutius for years in the spiritual life and during all that time, he did not recognize his own daughter. It was only when Sporagdus was ill and near death 
that Paphnutius' eyes were finally open and he recognized the beloved daughter he thought to be dead. The very same monk who had guided him through his grief for all those years. Can you imagine the astonishment when he learned that that was his daughter? that she was alive and that she was serving the Lord as a monk. It's hard for me to fathom. The father nursed his daughter lovingly during her final illness. After burying her, he gave up all his worldly goods and then became a monk himself. He lived in the very same cell that his daughter had occupied for the very rest of his life. We never know what life brings. And sometimes things come full circle, do they not? in quite unexpected ways. I have to say that it pleases me so much to know that in the end, they were together in the deepest sort of way. But it's hard to imagine both of their life journeys begun together and ended together serving our Lord and one another. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in the words our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A prayer of self-dedication. Almighty and eternal God, so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so control our wills, that we may be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.